there is a suite of very interesting services uh, which are offered in next generation networks. Uh, this is an evolving process because there are certain applications which are known to exist for quite some time. However, there are emerging uh, services and applications uh, which require some underlying technological support. So we'd look at some uh, very interesting next generation mobile services. Uh, these services are provided in mobile broadband to either uh, fixed uh, landline users or fixed mobile users um, or uh, even users while they are at roaming. We'd look at the technological landscape which forms the grounds and the basis for providing services. Then we'll also look at the services which can be offered. There are a lot of wired and wireless technologies. Next generation network covers them all. As for the wired technologies, providing um, a variety of services is not much of a problem because uh, the communication and delivery is almost ensured. The problem comes in wireless technologies. Uh, the wireless technologies are also quite diverse in terms of their capabilities and uh, the spectrum which they can use. Some of the bands are uh, uh, dedicated for some special services. Some are licensed bands. Then we have the industrial scientific and medical band. So each technology has its own specific uh, band. So this creates uh, some limitation on what uh, applications can be provided cert using certain technologies. Um, if you look at Wi-Fi um, vis-a-vis 3G technologies and IEEE WiMAX standard, Wi-Fi is the most uh, widely deployed and uh, we feel very comfortable with it because it's uh, uh, very close to us. It's there in every building, every suburb. So uh, as for uh, next generation services, each service may have its own uh, set of uh, QoS requirements because uh, barring uh, the best effort uh, services, other services do have their um, exclusive requirements. As for Wi-Fi, uh, there is no explicit QoS support. There are certain reasons for it because it was never designed to provision uh, QoS-based services. Uh, the obvious uh, background is that Wi-Fi is not based on uh, uh, time division multiple access um, in the radio uh, side. It means that uh, uh, since there is no dedica dedicated or dedication in terms of time allotment, uh, we don't expect the uh, consistency of service in, uh, uh, in Wi-Fi. Then there's another constraint. Uh, the Wi-Fi technology uh, can be operated in licensed spectrum, but um, it is mostly offered in the unlicensed spectrum, uh, which is either uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz ISM band or 5 gigahertz band. So it means that uh, there is no certainty if uh, this uh, spectrum is going to be available all the time in the areas in which these services are to be provided. As for the um, 3GPP um, based uh, technologies and IEEE based WiMAX, there is a dedicated explicit QoS support. It means the packet formats, um, that is the payload, uh, the network devices, um, the network elements, each have provision to incorporate uh, different types of traffics and the uh, differentiation between those traffics is uh, realizable in these networks. So um, the QS is supported in these networks. Uh, they have different class types uh, determined by the class of service, type of service, uh, grade of service, etc. Uh, then there is a provision to tackle or uh, um, manage the types of traffic um, into different behaviors. So the network has the capability and capacity to treat different kinds of traffics 
differently. Then we have uh, different uh, priority and scheduling mechanisms, which are also incorporated in both 3GPP-led uh, technologies and WiMAX. Um, since uh, we are talking about QS for these uh, 3GPP-led and IEEE WiMAX standard, so if these two technologies are going to interoperate, uh, so uh, some kind of mapping would be needed because uh, the definition of uh, um, class of service, type of service, grade of service may vary from technology to technology. So, uh, for instance, the definition of a flow as in WiMAX is different from the definition of a uh, flow uh, as in uh, 3GPP. Uh, and they have their own definitions of classes. So, there is a translation mechanism which is required here if interoperability is to be achieved. Then the radio access network physically technologies are also different. This results into some kind of uh, uh, mismatch um, and some um, degradation of uh, QoS provisioning is expected once the traffic is sent from WiMAX to LTE or vice versa. Uh, there's another requirement to either uh, permit the traffic coming from one kind of network to another, we call it the vertical handover, uh, to either admit, it's, it's, a, it's an admission control policy, um, to allocate resources um, uh, or deny it. If it is allowed, then at what level? It means, is the quality of service going to remain uh, persistent for two heterogeneous technologies interoperating with each other? Or some kind of degradation is going to take place, either the bitrate is compromised or there is some increase in the uh, packet loss um, known as the uh, packet loss ratio. Um, some delay would be expected once the technologies change and if this delay is uh, varying across uh, the traffic flow then jitter is also going to be experienced. So it means it's an interesting and important concern once uh, different mobile services are to be provided uh, using these technologies. The landscape of services which can be offered in the next generation mobile networks um, is again quite diverse and it's continuously evolving. The services are actually at the uh, uh, more functional level and applications are more at the usage level. So it means essentially different uh, cross combinations of services can be um, created by different applications. So we have real time and non real time uh, services within the real time we have different requirements which are generated from the fact that uh, within real time we have uh, voice over ip which emulates the uh, pstn plmn kind of uh, um, traffic then we have the uh, live streaming traffic uh, which is coming from a source uh, for instance live coverage of an event um, gaming online gaming between different uh, participating uh, gamers online and then we have uh, uh, non real time services which are pretty straightforward these are elastic uh, traffic types um, mostly browser based as in email um, web surfing and peer to peer for both of these real time and non real time and within these real time and non real time their subtypes uh, each of these service requires a different behavior uh, so it means the underlying technology has to ensure that this behavior is provided by the network to these services uh, using enforcement of certain policies these policies are mostly uh, telecom companies driven or uh, user specified Mostly they reach an, at an agreement in the form of a service level known as SLA. So when this 
policy has to be implemented at a certain network element it is known as the policy enforcement uh, point uh, then we have the policy decision point where which policy is to be enforced is decided so uh, using pdp pep pip these are certain terminologies which are uh, policy uh, specific uh, these are invoked so what we finally conclude here is that we have a lot of uh, heterogeneity in technology using these technologies uh, in an interoperable and integrated manner needs the understanding of the services which are to be provided on these heterogeneous networks.